to break right next to you. I'm a T-Rex for you. Wow. Break dead. Hate you with that head. Cause I am the bad boy rapper. Hi guys, I am Teles and this is my partner Elan Santiago. We both gonna explain you guys the turtle guard or the turtle game. Okay, first I wanna thank you guys also for recognize that I'm playing guard. Okay, many judges in many tournaments do not recognize and they don't give me points for my sweep. Okay, but turtle man, come on. You know, the turtle is not a, it's not a very good animal. The turtle is lazy, you know. I'm a kind of lazy also, you know. So, you know, the voice of the people, the voice of God. So, it's okay. The turtle is okay. And although the turtle has a shell that protects itself very well, okay. What is a good point and... You guys gonna see that the turtle bites the guy sometimes. Okay, so I'm not it's not a kind of game that I just protect myself. You guys gonna see that I have a lot of attack also. Okay, so I will explain you guys better the positions in Portuguese so you guys understand more exactly my words. Okay guys, so let's go for the real shit. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the Turtle Guard got started and how I came to develop this type of game. I remember starting to fight from the Turtle Guard position as a purple belt. I used to train with Fabio Gurgel in Sao Paulo and both Tereré and I were purple belts at the time. We used to train together on a regular basis and we were always very competitive while at the same time having a strong friendship and lots of respect for each other. Tereré used to have this particular technique that he used a lot. He always enjoyed attacking the back, so whenever he was passing the guard, he would bring my knees together, pushing them to the side, trying to expose the back or get side control. Let me demonstrate to you what I'm talking about. I would be fighting from the open guard and he would control both of my knees and push them to the side, just like this. Now, if I try to move towards him, he wouldn't end up passing my guard and getting side control. In order to avoid that, I started to go to my knees, ending up in the turtle position. So every time he tried that particular technique, I would find myself in a turtle where I felt pretty comfortable and safe. Another training partner that forced me to develop the turtle game was Leozinho, Leo Vieira. Whenever Leozinho got to the side control, he would control my gi in order to set up his brabo choke. Now, this sort of lapel grip makes it virtually impossible for me to turn towards him unless I use a lot of strength to break his grip. Since it was impossible for me to turn towards him, I pretty much had to roll to the opposite side. I would create some space and come to my knees like this, forcing his grip to unravel and once again avoiding the side control and get into my turtle position, always finding myself in a turtle. This started to work really well for me at the academy and then I eventually got promoted to brown belt. When you reach the brown belt level, leg locks are allowed in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competition. This was definitely a good change for me. Now, not only would I be able to defend myself when getting to the turtle, 
but I could also be offensive from that position. One situation that started to happen a lot was for me to execute a shoulder roll and then attack my opponent, either with a leg lock here or a foot lock. This is something that also started to work great for me, and I started to fight a lot from the turtle guard, where I could now not only defend myself, but also attack my opponent at the same time. Another interesting point that I would like to discuss is the main difference between Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and other martial arts, the guard. What is the guard? In boxing, kickboxing or karate, the guard consists of the use of arms and hands in order to protect from punches and other strikes. In jiu-jitsu, on the other hand, we use our legs to form our guard. The legs will be our line of protection. As long as our opponent is in front of our legs, we are protected. A great advantage to this is that the legs are way stronger than the arms and thus can provide better protection. You can see the guard being used in Valetudo and mixed martial arts competition. When the jiu-jitsu fighter finds himself in the bottom position, he resorts to using his legs to protect himself. Therefore, if you want to become a good jiu-jitsu fighter, it is important that you learn and practice the guard. You need to master the guard. We're going to start by demonstrating a simple drill, an exercise that will allow you to develop a good guard game, and in this particular case, the turtle guard. This is called the four bases drill. I'm going to use this mat section for this drill and I will place my hands and feet on the four corners, thus maintaining good alignment throughout the whole drill. I start by placing each hand and foot on a different corner of the mat and then I'm going to try to switch the foot with the opposite hand, in this case my right foot in left hand, just like this. Now I'm going to switch my right hand with my left foot. Notice that I maintain my balance using only one foot in hand on the mat, like this, again and again. It is important for me to try to drill slowly at first, almost in slow motion, focusing on maintaining my balance at all times. Eventually, I can also try to speed things up. In this variation, I'm doing the drill with my hips off the ground. Now, if I do want to keep my hips on the ground, that's not a problem. I will increase the number of support points and now I will have five bases instead of four. Now when I do turn, I will find myself in the turtle position. This drill is very similar to the levantada técnica, the technical way of standing up to base. Every jiu-jitsu practitioner should already be familiar with this technique. When standing up to base, I place one foot and the opposite hand on the ground, lifting my free leg through that gap and standing. Okay? Again, we start in our square position. I then balance myself on one foot and the opposite hand, lift my leg and stand. Boom. When we start fighting from the turtle position, 
we also need to learn how to properly execute a front roll. Here's the major point to keep in mind. We must always roll on top of the shoulder and never on top of the head. So when we first learn how to roll, we must place our head sideways on the mat, rolling on top of the shoulder. We can also do it to the other side, just like this. So what happens is that when I roll, I normally land belly up, which is not good for me. What I need to do instead is to roll and go back to the turtle position right away. Here's what I'm going to do. I place my head on the mat and move my legs to the same side. Rolling and landing on my knees, going to the turtle. Boom. I always land on my knees instead of landing on my back like this. Now, we're going to do an exercise that will help us learn how to position our heads in order to be able to execute the shoulder roll. I place my head on the mat and roll with my legs to the same side. I switch sides and roll again. Switch the head position, roll to the same side. Switch again and roll. We execute this roll over and over again, slowly picking up the speed and dexterity while at the same time strengthening our neck. Even though we're not rolling directly on top of the neck, the neck will play a part in helping us land on our knees when we finish the roll. So we drill this roll over and over again, picking up the speed as we go. We then switch sides like this. By doing this drill, we're going to develop a solid base so that when we get to the turtle position, we're going to be able to execute all the necessary roles and we'll be able to fight from the turtle guard offensively. All right, guys, now we're going to work on a different drill so that we can develop the turtle guard. We're going to get to the turtle guard from the regular guard. So we're going to do this very loosely, just working on our movement. So I'm fighting from the guard. Elan moves to the side. Now I'm going to put my arm on the inside and get to my turtle. Now I use my shoulder roll to get back to guard. Now Elan moves to the opposite side. I'm going to do the same thing. Shoot an arm, get to my knees, use a shoulder roll to get back to guard. Once again, now it's very important that you shouldn't let him control the head. This is not good. So before he gets to the head, I'm going to block him with the arm and I'm going to move on my belly, get into my knees. Shoulder roll and back to regular guard. Before he controls the head, I control the biceps. Now I'm going to use my head on the inside so I can get to the turtle and roll back to guard. Protect your head, roll to your belly, now come to your knees, roll on top of the shoulder and get the guard. Once again he passes, I protect the head, I roll to my belly, get on my knees, roll over the shoulder, Okay? Now I'm going to show you a situation that happens a lot during sparring. Whenever we train jiu-jitsu with a partner, we're going to find ourselves in this position quite often. 
And the drill that we just demonstrated will help you a lot with this, since knowing how to roll and where to position our head comes into play in this situation. So here's the position. I'm fighting Inlam from the open guard position, maybe trying to use spider guard, and he gets control of my belt or hips and tries to stack me like this. Now once I get to this position, I must know how to position my head here. If I stay here in the middle, I'm going to hurt myself, and if he uses the grip, if I move my head to the same side, he's going to pass my guard and get side control. On the other hand, if I move my head to the opposite side, I'm able to roll on top of my shoulder and get him back in guard. Once again, he's trying to stack me, I roll, I sit and get him back to guard. Just like this. Once again, now he's using the grip on that side, so if I move my head to the same side, he will pass my guard and get side control. Therefore, I should always move my head to the opposite side so I can execute the roll and get back to guard. Once again. Now, if he's not using any grip, I can pretty much choose to which side I want to go. Once he commits to a grip, I need to move my head to the opposite side. Once again, he stacks, I start rolling, and I can stop at the turtle position here if I want to. Okay. Okay guys, now we're going to work on a different drill, and this one is pretty much an old school drill. So people used to do that a long time ago. If you ever train in a traditional jiu-jitsu school, you must have practiced this drill at one point or another. So it's basically a guard movement drill. So we're going to use our hands inside the belt or grabbing the belt and we're going to try to execute guard movements like that without using our hands. So we're going to learn to use our legs instead of our hands, developing a good guard game. This is a drill that you're going to notice that forces us to get to the turtle position, to get to our knees a whole lot, because we cannot use our hands to help us. So I'm going to grab my belt like this, and Elan will now try to pass my guard. So he moves to the side, and I cannot allow him to get to the side.
We're now going to work on a very similar drill, this one with more freedom of movement. Elan will try to pass my guard using his hands normally, while I won't be able to use my grips, so I will keep my hands clenched into a fist the whole time. Here's what is going to happen. Elan is going to try to pass, and since I'm not able to get a hold of my opponent, I really need to focus and get into my knees the whole time, get into the turtle like this. Okay. All right, guys, now I'm going to try to show you, especially to the beginners, how the turtle position is something that happens all the time in grappling. There are fighters that go to the turtle position and then try to transition back to guard from there. There are also other fighters who use the turtle position to try to stand back up, to get to their feet. What I also see is that there are a lot of people that get to the turtle position and then find themselves lost. They simply don't know what to do. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you some of the ways in which a fighter can find himself in the turtle position. One of the most common situations that results in the turtle is when a person tries to go for a takedown, maybe a bayana or a single leg, somehow try to get control of the other fighter's legs. The opponent is aware of the shot and sprawls on top of you. What happens is that the bottom fighter finds himself in the turtle position. Another situation is when you try an iponseoi nage throw. A lot of people try to execute the drop seal iponseoi and the opponent defends and you find yourself in a turtle. Yet another type of scenario is when the person tries uh, something like a fireman scary throw. The opponent managed to balance himself and block the throw and once again what happens? You find yourself in a turtle position. You have to go to your knees to protect yourself and we're in the turtle. Another scenario that may happen is for me to try to pull guard on Elan. So he notices my intentions and he simply moves to the side, get into my back. Once again, I'm in a turtle position. You can observe that the turtle position happens pretty much all the time. If you try to escape from side control, you're going to end up in the turtle a whole lot. Another situation is that terere technique that we discussed earlier. If the guy tries to pass my guard moving the knees to the side, I'm pretty much forced to go to my knees. In other words, People are always going to their knees. They just don't know what to do from the turtle position. Alright guys, now we're going to start to work on the turtle guard series. And the first thing that we need to work on is defending the two basic problems here. The first thing we need to understand is that the person is always looking for a back mount, so we need to block his hooks from coming in. At the same time, we need to worry about our neck. He will always be looking for a choke. So those are the two main issues that we're going to have to deal with. So blocking the neck attacks and blocking the hooks so he's not able to get the four points and get a good back mount position in me. 
So first we're going to start on working on blocking the neck. Now, whenever I'm in a turtle position, he will always try to get control of that collar. He's always looking for the choke, trying to strangle me. So what should I do here? The first way of blocking this is to use my hands. So I always keep my right hand up here, not letting him reach my collar, blocking that position before he even gets to the collar. I can even grab his sleeve here, keeping his hand away. So block him. I can use my right hand to block, or if he gets any closer, I can use my other hand to maintain control. Always trying to keep his hand away from my neck. Always away from my neck. Never let him get any close. All right, as with everything in life, sometimes things don't go as planned. So I may find myself here in a turtle position and my opponent managed to get control of that collar. So before I'm able to block it, he already control the collar. What should I do in this situation here? The first thing that I need to do is get a control near the wrist. So I may use his gi here and I'm going to pull his wrist down so I can take some pressure off my neck. Now I'm going to look towards his arm and I'm going to bring my chin down towards my chest. I'm going to bring my hand against his elbow so I can pop his elbow out free in my head out of that grip. Once again, he controls my collar. The first thing that I need to do is come right away, grab the gi and pull that hand down. If I cannot get a hold of the gi, I can use his grip here with the wrist. Now look towards him, always towards his arm in order to get some room there to maneuver. Now bring your chin down and pop that elbow out of the way so you can duck under with the head and free yourself from the position. Once again, he control the neck, I control the wrist, I'm gonna look towards him and bring my chin down towards my chest, pop that elbow out and duck under with the head. Now we're going to look at a different way of blocking that neck attack. So once again, Elam managed to get a hold of my collar, but right now he really keeps that elbow tight. So it's impossible for me to pop that elbow up, so I'm not able to bring my head underneath his arm, ducking under and escaping the position like before. So what should I do in this situation here? Right now I'm going to use my right hand to come on the inside, bring it on top of his forearm, just like this. Once I get my hand in, I can shoot my whole arm and break his grip, protecting my neck. Once again, I'm going to bring my hand on the inside on top of the forearm. I'm going to shoot my whole arm through. And right now he no longer has a grip. He may maintain the grip, but right now it's not a danger anymore. All right, a different way of preventing that choke from being effective is to use my hand here. So once again, he gets a hold of my collar, I'm going to bring my left thumb on the inside. I'm going to push against his hand. So watch this, I'm going to bring my thumb on the inside, on top of his hand, right on top of his index finger. And now I'm going to use that grip to push to the side. Pushing the hand away, blocking his grip. Once again, he gets a hold of me. I place my thumb on top of the index finger. And I use this grip to push to the side, stopping the choke. All right, guys. Now we're going to start to worry about the second problem here in the turtle guard position, which is dealing with the hooks. So I need to avoid the hooks to come in because otherwise he will get the back mount and he will also get four points. 
So how should I protect against the hooks? Pretty much by using my elbows. So I keep my near elbow always tight against my hips. Now you're going to notice that it's going to be extremely difficult for him to bring that foot in and he's really unable to bring the hooks. Now if he rotates to the opposite side, I'm going to use my other elbow to block. So since I'm not sure which side he's going to attack, I always use both elbows to stop him from getting the hooks. Always keep both elbows in. Never place your hands on the ground because then you're giving him room to get the hooks. Always hide like a turtle. So bring the elbows in, stay tight and stop him from getting the back mount. All right, guys, so when we're fighting from the turtle position, we always need to be worried about the hooks. Even if we use our elbows to defend ourselves, it's still dangerous. Why? He can always try to come with his leg on top of that arm, maybe try to expose my back, or just get me in a good, solid attack position. So that's not good for me. Let's see how it happens. So I'm on my knees, I'm with my elbows closed here, preventing him from getting clean hooks. And now he's going to use his leg to trap my arm like that. So this is not a good situation for me. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my hand that's on the inside to try to pull that leg over so I can create some space here. And now I'm going to shoot my opposite hand here on the inside. I'm going to start going to my knees and I roll underneath him, escaping the position. Again, I start in the turtle, he gets that hook. Right now, I'm going to step up with my right foot and I create some space here so that I can shoot my left hand underneath and I start rolling, escaping behind my opponent. Now we're going to work in a position that's very similar to the one before. Not only he attacks with a hook, but he also attacks my collar. So I get in the turtle, Ila gets the hook, and he grabs my collar. Right now it's extremely important for me to be worried about the choke. So I need to know to which side I turn my head. Now, if I start turning my head towards my left, you can see that I'm going to get choked. So I need to turn the opposite way. Now, I do the same thing as before. I open some space so I can shoot my arm. And now, if he stays on top, you can see that I need to take the pressure off my neck, unraveling the choke, so to speak, and get into the back. Just like this. Again. I'm in the same position, he gets the hook and he gets the collar. Now I need to turn that way here so that I take some pressure off my neck. Now I can open some space and shoot my left hand in the inside. Now watch me take the pressure off my neck as I spin around and escape towards the back, exposing his back here. Okay guys, we're going to be in the same position as before, so I'm fighting from the turtle and Ilan gets my collar and gets that hook on top of my arm. Now I'm going to do the same thing as before, but once we get to this position with the second hand in, instead of going underneath him, trying to roll in towards his back, I notice as he's off balance towards that side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift his leg and sweep him that way. Now I get out of that and come to side control like this. Once again, Ella gets the collar and he brings the hook on the inside. I'm going to do the same thing as before and now I notice his off balance that way so I'm going to sweep him that way. Get the leg out of there and get side control.
Okay, now let's deal with a different situation here. So I'm hiding in the turtle, I'm closing up, and my opponent jumps on top of me, trying to bring the ball of his feet here near my hip. So pretty much he already has the hooks here. Once I find myself in this position, here's what I gotta do. I gotta pinch my elbows towards my hips, trying to stop him from putting the hooks in. And right now, Let's see, I'm gonna throw him backwards because he has no base there. Why? If I try to roll him towards the front, he's gonna base out with his hands. So I need to roll him backwards because there's no way he can stop that. Like that. A little bit to the side. Now, once I land here, he will really try to get the hook in because the bottom one is already blocked because I'm laying on top of it. So you can notice that his hook there, his right hook, will not come in because my weight is on top of that. So I need to be worried about the left leg. So I'm going to bring both arms underneath that leg and I'm going to start rolling this way so I can get my side control here. He jumps on top of me. Right now, I gotta make sure that he doesn't get the hook right away. So I'm gonna pinch my elbows and roll backwards and a little bit to the side. Staying heavy on top of one leg. Now the second one, I'm gonna use both arms to deal with it. Rolling and getting side control. All right, guys, now Elan is going to start attacking my collar aggressively. So he's really trying to get the collar, he's really trying to get the choke, and I'm trying to block him. And right now, somehow, maybe I'm not paying enough attention to the hooks, and he managed to get a hook in, and he gets the other one in. So he gets the back mount. Here's what I'm going to do. The first thing that I need to do is to make sure that I maintain control of the wrist and I need to bring my arm underneath his arm like that. Now I'm gonna move my hips and I'm gonna roll on top of that leg just like this. Now I'm gonna start turning towards him and at the same time I use my grip to move his arm away. I may even push against the elbow like this and I find myself back in the guard. Now Ela is aggressively attacking my neck here and he managed to get the hooks. The first thing is to control his arm, so you got to make sure that you're controlling that arm and I always roll towards that side. So I move the arm across towards my opposite shoulder and I roll making sure that I'm heavy always on the leg. Now I'm going to shift grips here. So now I'm going to use my left hand against his elbow so I can push that elbow towards his face as I turn towards him. Going to guard. 